Oh hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Kobe Scroby and welcome back to The Last of Us Part 1. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with me today. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoy the stream, make sure you follow, turn on notifications, and if you'd like to support the channel, no longer see any ads, and you'd also be welcome to join my private satisfactory server and come play with us, you can subscribe for $5 or you can subscribe for free. The way you do that is if you or someone you know has an Amazon Prime account, you can connect it to your Twitch account and you will have one free Twitch Prime subscription to use per month. You could choose to use it here. Otherwise, you got to be lucky and get gifted a sub. If you're watching later on YouTube, you can use the YouTube join button or the Patreon link in the description if you want to join the satisfactory server. If you do any of those things, make sure you look in the YouTube description or pinned in the Twitch chat for a Discord link. Message me on Discord. I'll get you the server information, help you get logged in, and schedule some time to come play with you. We normally play on Wednesday, but we can always switch that up if something works better. It doesn't have to be Wednesday. So I, um, I started this. Actually, I started the stream, and then I opened the game. First, it opened on the wrong monitor, and then... It like crashed my graphics card. It had an NVENC error um, and it killed the stream and everything because the stream is encoded with the graphics card. So uh, I just right away just restarted the whole computer. Uh, I tried it, actually I tried it twice and then I restarted the computer and then I opened the game first to make sure it was working and then I opened all my other stuff and it's working now, but as you can see in the bottom right corner of the screen, we are again building shaders. Main story at 23%. Why? It, I've spent hours, probably th at least minimum three hours, maybe four, letting this game build shaders. And now it's doing it again. If I would have known this, I would have started this game three and a half hours ago and let it do this. I, at this point, am thinking that I might switch the game to killer frequency. Yeah, it's only at 23%. You know what? Let's just do it. Screw this game, man. Every time, almost every time, I uh, start this game, I have to sit here for at least an hour and watch it build shaders while using 100% of my CPU. So I'm done with it. I have a limited amount of time today. 
I had uh, two and a half hours to stream, and now I only have one and a half. And I'm not going to waste my time sitting here watching this thing build shaders. Let's do something. Uh, let's see. It's only at 25%. We're done with this. We are done with this. Next. Change of plans. If anybody comes in and says, hey, this isn't The Last of Us. Tell him I decided The Last of Us uh, Part 1 on PC sucks. <laughs> and I'm done with it. We're going to actually do something with our time and have some fun. Dude, I got this new fan on and it's like on the second to lowest setting and my feet are cold. <laughs> had our air time with. Yeah, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? This is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta do it. Oh, you're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. When you're ready, shut the music off. So what happened last time was we had to go outside and get the record that Peggy threw outside. And then we got locked out and then went in through the basement okay, and then found like a secret room with, with this Shut board and all kinds of pictures and creepy mannequins and stuff in it. Uh, and then we used all this stuff to find out who is where and call them and save them. So we did Time the gas the station. Off already and the guy got out right before it blew up so we've got three other people here uh to try to call and save uh and virginia okay, is the person us. that performed the autopsy on somebody uh i don't think i have what does reset objects do shut the music off it just puts all this crap back away um, okay, so let's continue here. Hello if again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. It's uh, the sound we all recognize. Fremman Plunker here. Who's this? Is it you? Good. Oh, this is the frat guy. Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives, the huge. Right, 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 right on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Sh she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's big of you, Plunker. Oh, it's nothing. Yeah, it seems like the killer is going after people that were involved in this cover-up of somebody of, I think, a kid dying. And Virginia did the autopsy, I believe. Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, radio man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm, I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Don't be sorry, I'd be jumpy too. I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy too. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought... Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because 
We think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Well, can you think of any reason why you'd have been targeted? No, I don't think so. All right. When you were attacked earlier, you mentioned a name. Clive. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Also, this board in the secret room, it seems as if, though, that's Clive's room and Clive's stuff, and he's the janitor, I think, custodian. Uh, and we th initially thought that it was him who was the killer, but now it seems like he is trying to save the people, and the people... Yeah, he's trying to save the people that the killer's going after. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he, well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? George Barrow, yeah. I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. It was covered One up. Day work to find a, a boy on my slab and as I finished the autopsy this man Clive he just burst in and we heard that on the he recording making demands to give over the reports to falsify what I found of course I said no but well when someone wants to make you do something they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, He'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. Speak for yourself, Peggy. No. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. She didn't say anything. She said she did it. So, Virginia's tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Aha! Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Jazz Pizzazz Hello Jazz. Hello again, Sandra! It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest! Of course. Heck, after the way you saved 
my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Why were you targeted? Be serious, that sounds nice. <laughs> Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Whoops. <clears throat> you found the body? Are you keeping secrets? Don't play games. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. Bam! Don't be a liar. <laughs> it's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Get on with it. Sure. Sure. Let's be nice to her. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything will be okay. Sandra? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... He... Uh, I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. Sandra? I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. What was that? Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's what was that timing. noise? We've got a call waiting just this second. Man, the the basement is wide open now. He could just walk right in here. It wouldn't let me close the door. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really out of the with everything <laughs> happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Boris. He's my uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Starting a oh. You <laughs> son of a bitch! Stop calling us. <laughs> Sorry, Forrest. It was a pizza Let's guy. Let's just move on. We've already got another caller on the line. I was like, what's so funny? The pizza guy keeps calling to try to get an ad in on the radio. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. 112 shot papers. <laughs> caller. Are you okay? Hmm. Man, go in there. Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come <laughs> rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Forest? Forest? Are you okay? Man, he's all over the place with this Forrest? today. Forest? I hope. The whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Oh, relax. Jesus, guy. Forrest. Sorry, sorry. That was, that was too much. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. Folks. Also, I'm getting some screen tearing. You sink. Frame rate limit 60. Don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's 
all I'm gonna say about that. Mm, moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Ooh, who Don. Are you? Don? Oh, we played your oh. song. I think Don is either the killer or working with him. Oh, long ride home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. First, I'm calling because I need your help. We had a deal? Don, we had a deal. Kept my end. Who is the next target? Oh, it's too late for that now. I'll be the judge of that. Oh, fine. Chuck Brody was the next target, but that ship sailed. I got that one. Done. We saved him, but only just. You should have told us. I'm sorry. I probably should have. I just... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. You said you needed help? I sure do. Do you mean... Yes. He's after <laughs> me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next, after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. No, no, no. She's the killer. She needs help getting into apartment to kill someone else. That's what's happening. Ask a neighbor, go elsewhere, use a key. Can a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. Mm-hmm, sure. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get inside. Which no. apartment block do you live in? No. Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. That was pretty obvious. She's by train tracks. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Where's the railroad tracks? Is that here? Noisy part of town. Not a dog person. Sounds like a noisy part of town. It is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. Now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any. The whistling man. He's coming down the street. I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, please. I need your help. I need the code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. Mm. I think we're gonna help her get in there so she can go kill somebody. What's your neighbor's name? I don't know my neighbors, remember? Please, I need to get in. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000 was keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Starling Security 4000, huh? Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. No! I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Don into her apartment. A classic back by popular demand. This is Long Ride Home by the Barn Finds. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Mm -hmm. It wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. 
Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, mm. I'm not sure who, but to help someone. To help the killer get in to the apartment and kill people. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments and somewhere Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? <laughs> Nothing by way of key nope. codes. I see. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, sorry. Any ideas, Peggy? Dawn says she's stuck outside the Woodside Apartments with the whistling man nearby. She's locked out because of some new security system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Starling 4000. Right. And we had the same security system delivered here. Clive was going to install it, so check the basement. I guess that's where Clive would have stuff like that. Thanks, Peggy. Oh, no problem. <gasps> Wait. Don't take too long. 119? Ah, oh, okay. All right, here we go. Time to get killed. I don't want to help her get in there. Tell her to go, well, I was going to say tell her to go to the police station, but there's no police there. Two of them are dead, and the other one is driving three hours to the next town instead of using a phone, I guess? Which is strange also. Now we're going back to the basement to get killed. Anybody in here? All right, I'm looking for something for the security system. I'll take that in case I need to throw it, I guess. All right, we'll go back in the scary room. I don't like these either that I can't open. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Order delivery form. Starling must have left this by accident. This system's not even installed at Woodside. It's not delivered where the apartment that she says she wants to get into? Is that what he said? All right, I'm going to leave this behind. What was that noise? Oh, man. <laughs> Nothing? All right, let's GTFO. Let's GTFO up here. Hmm. We better lock these doors, man. This one's not locked anymore either. No! Son of a bitch. <laughs> See, this is just wide open. You could just walk in here. So here's where we found the secret room. It's in here. With the mannequins.
I like this one underneath there. Okay. Is it gonna fall? No? Fine. They fell the first time I walked up here. Alright, and we're back. I can't believe you're leaving all these doors unlocked. Killer? Killer? Okay. Killer? This one's got a padlock on it. Killer? Peggy? I'm not getting in there tonight. What? Why not? Bow, bicka, bow, 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 bicka, bicka, bow. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... Why no need? That might be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. Patching you through. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay. If you say so. Line one. Whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Which code should I give Don? Give entry code. Give alarm test activation mode. Give maintenance code. Give alarm deactivation code. Okay. I didn't read this yet. So. Factory asks access codes. Maintenance call. Uh, alarm test warning. This will set off all security measures. Alarm test, deactivation code, entry code. So what, if I give her the maintenance code, does that mean it's gonna call someone from maintenance to come? I don't wanna be the one that gives her the code and then have her kill a bunch of people. Six digit system, simply enter the code. Starting security, comes with a range of features. The default codes for these features are listed below. Please change these codes immediately to prevent unwanted entry. When entering codes and commands, sequential key depressions must be made within four to five seconds of one another. If four to five seconds elapse without a key depression, the entry will be aborted and must be repeated from its beginning. Be sure to observe the, this precaution when performing any of the procedures in this manual. If you make a mistake while entering a code, stop, press the star, then start over. If you stop in the middle while under a code and then immediately start the entry over, an erroneous code might be entered. What is the uh, definition of erroneous?
wrong, incorrect. <laughs> okay. I would just say wrong. <laughs> okay, so what do I do? Yep, I wasn't clicked into the game. Stop it. Here. Gimme. Give gimme, give gimme. Give gimme. Okay. So. Oh, I can't see it. Okay. So. Maintenance call? I think I want to do the maintenance call. Alarm test warning this will set off all security measures. Alarm test deactivation code, entry code. I'm going to do maintenance because maybe it'll call a maintenance worker. Uh... The code is 311212. Thank you, Forrest. And he's saying this on the air, too. Did you hear what she said? Alarm's going off now. No! She killed the dog? I should have saved it. trying to get into the building. I tried to help, but... Shit! Horace, man, you got no idea. That was him! That was the whistling man! The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle... Oh, man, I... Maxie, I'm coming, buddy! Horace, I've gotta go. I've gotta go! Come on, Maxie. Stay strong. Okay. The Gallows Creek. An alarming Here's development. Music. Roller Ricky process, survived. Yeah! Just happened. But his dog died. So my other, the other thing that I was thinking about doing is give her the one that will set the alarm off. But I mean, this kind of worked the same, right? Because she broke the window and went in anyway. I did not want to give her the code to get in there. What are we doing? Oh, put on a record. So the whistling man is, is a, a woman? woman? Just like I was saying? I know, I can't believe it. I had my suspicions. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Mm hmm. Seemed pretty normal. I knew she wasn't right. I thought she was just regular. Gallows Creek strange? I knew she wasn't right. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Why yes. do you think she requested that song? To get me outside. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She mm. never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Oh, hold on, I messed up my phone here. Okay. Okay, you're live in three, two. Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman, one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. No. Work together. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. 
The killer was calling themselves Don. Could be a fake name. Do not trust anyone called Don. <laughs> this could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our it next is. caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Is he still breathing? Yeah, but, but he's bleeding out fast. I really need help. Please. Take a breath. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh, no. Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Hold on, lady. I'm trying to organize all my stuff. Was it the whistling man? Was it a woman? Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? Because she's only going after certain people, and that was not the right guy. Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital! I can't drive, so we need an ambulance! Why can't you drive? First, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. Mm -hmm. You should get all the info you can. What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason! Jason Parker! Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg! We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. Evidence. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? Hit me. I'm sure we can handle it. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. Don't take it's it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it, so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Uh, I can't keep up. Keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. 
What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Mm, okay. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All it's right, not Forrest. so hard. Casey's still on line one. Casey. Hi, 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 hi. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. How you holding up? How's Jason? We're on our own. I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No! No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Y yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. We need to secure the knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer, some cloths on the hood of the car, and what else? I guess I've got my jacket. Use the clean rags. Take the cleaning rags and hold them over the wound. No. I'm sorry, Jason. Oh, we should have used the laundry because wait, is the laundry we don't know we don't know how clean any of them is. Okay, no, we we don't know. We're good. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. Oh, I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. She'll have to drive him. Any suggestions? Could somebody nearby help? Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, Just Kate us, what's did up? a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. Where's Nancy there are Drive? There problems with that. What? Go on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. 
Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not no. a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. <laughs> you put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. I just have to look around. <laughs> the future is floppy. <laughs> Good. What's floppy? I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Dude, this game is so good. I mean, it was pretty slow at the beginning when we were getting into it, which it was still good then. And now this, th I love this. Master of unlocking, unlock all doors in the station. <gasps> I unlocked all doors. Kids who play this today will actually think a floppy disk is from the future. <laughs> uh. Um. Hey, I'll tell you what. I've had to pee for a little while, so I'm gonna take a real quick break here. I was trying to wait till the ads, ad timer was over, but there's still like 10 minutes left, and this is a good time before I get into this next thing here. So I'm gonna take a real quick break. I'm gonna go ahead and run the ad also, so I don't have to do when I come back. If you'd like to support the channel no longer see any ads and you'd also be welcome to join my private satisfactory server and come play with us you can subscribe for five dollars or for free with a twitch prime otherwise you got to be lucky and get gifted a sub i'm going to run a three minute ad break because that will shut off pre-roll ads for another hour uh and i will be right back i might be back before the, the ads are over All right, and we're back. The ad's still got 36 seconds left, too. 
Ooh. So, I don't know if you remember when I was playing this before, there was a caller whose name was Don, who kept sounding kind of a little sketchy. Well, she killed a dog and some people while I was on the phone with her. So that's our current uh, lead is that Don is the one, is the whistling man. Uh, bam. All right. Here we go. Reggie's office. Head to Reggie's office and try to work out. Uh, work out the safe combination. Okay. So I think Reggie's office is probably back here. Ooh, it sounds spooky. I think it's this one. Yeah. Hey. Ooh, a safe. Oh. First aid to the injured. Certificate is to certify that Reggie has successfully completed their standard course. Okay. I think we got all the records too. Yeah, I think. I want to believe. Oh, floppy disk. Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post-it notes. <laughs> And he wrote it on a post-it note. Alien sightings, number 75, UFO over park. 18, 10, 85. 10, 18, 85. All right. I wish I could zoom. Chalop Ch Chalupacabras. Soda, soda. Nachos. Chalupa, chalupa, chalupa. Oh, churro. Salsa dip. Tomato salsa. What? Oh, I thought that it was $4. It changes $4. Like, that's a good deal for some chalupas. Chalumpa loompas. Uh, I wish I... I can't read this. Oh, that's that one. Okay, we've seen that before. Looks like Madison. With the camera and stuff the uh, the game all right so looks like I need a four digit code X forever need to write pitch document oh it's a title good title bring back original protag protagonist and villain okay so we got the computer Someone already took the picture down. Very important date. Okay. Nope. That's not working. Well. Must be something else. You should try first. Because if you... <laughs> it might be open. And then you won't have to try to find the code. Alright. Let's look at the computer. Ooh. What's this say? Reggie, or remember Reggie Jr.'s birthday is 9-10, not 10-9. Oh, jeez. 0910? Nope, that's not working. Must be something else. Or... One zero zero nine. Okay. Had to check. Oh, here's another one. Ask Janine where those tapes are. It's been weeks now. Overdue. All 
Alright, nothing else, right? I probably want to make sure I didn't miss a sticky note somewhere. Uh, they're all tangled. What about this guy? Yay! Alright. Please insert floppy disk. Could this be it? Deep cuts, top secret. Pizza delivery killer who kills with a pizza cutter. Free slice on me. <laughs> Terrifyingly, there is never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in as final girl's boyfriend? Protagonist is college student Megan, surname to follow. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful, and lactose intolerant. Amplifies the divide between her and the pizza killer. T take place on 1107. Very important date for the town. That's it. 1107. Great goose gathering. Event where a large number of geese appear suddenly and save the town from starvation. How? Does the town eat some? Try to link this into the greater story. Need to kill off Megan's support network. Throughout the movie, like Axe 3, but even scarier. Maybe partner with Ponty's Pizza for the launch. 110 orders just received. What? 1 out of 10 orders just received a pizza cutter. And tickets to the movie. Alright, is this all that's on here? I think it's 1107. Da, 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 da. Oh my god. Uh, okay. Personal file. Hedges John. Personal file. Forrest Nash. That's me. Lawson. Karen Lawson. Weaver, Peggy. Albright, Barbar, Barbara. Carter Bradley. Oh, there's intercom in here. I'm in, Peggy. I found the floppy disks. Just put it in the slot, right? You got it. Remember, we need somebody Medical training who lives near 25 Nancy Drive. Let me know when you've got somebody. This guy. Don't waste time on anybody that can't help us. Reginald Scott, first aid. Now, where's 25 Nancy Drive? I have not been able to find Nancy Drive. Rogers. Thornside. Blake, King, Mason, Hopper, Mason, Clark, Bond, Nancy Drive. Okay. He also had a receipt from Chalupa Cabras. So I think we got to put these in and look at them and see where they live. They got to take the other one out. Wait. There it is. What the hell was that? What was that? Was that Peggy falling to the ground above me?
Don Hedges. Address 14 Nancy Drive. That's pretty close. Jan refuses to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was station policy to send everybody regardless. So this guy was a war medic. And he lives on 14 Nancy Drive. John apparently has a bunch of medical equipment in his home that he procured from the military at the end of his service. Is that logical? Do I need to report him? I spoke to John again about eating the free samples that Brad gets sent for his reviews. He said he'd stop, but he said that the last three times. Is it un-American to reprimand a war vet? <laughs> no, Americans do that all the time. Okay. So... This is a good one. This is me. Let's see what they got to say about me. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. Forrest, what are you doing? We don't have time for this. We have a man literally dying on the line, and we're <laughs> more interested in you. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I, can I can't believe later. we actually got the Forrest Nash here in Gallows Creek. His motivation may be low, his demands are a bit beyond our means, and he's currently blacklisted from any reputable station, but honestly, we don't have a reputation to lose. Forrest isn't really integrating with the team. Seems to have this lone wolf thing going on. Heard him call Janine Janie. J9. And Brenda in his first week. Hopefully he changes when he gets settled. I've paired Forrest with Peggy for his show. They seem to have developed a relationship of sorts pretty quickly. Which is good because we sure don't have the show budget to pair him with Karen. Okay. All right, we don't need this one. Barbara? Karen, okay, this is one I want to look at. Peggy. Hey, Peggy. I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. What? Why are you reading my file? You need to find someone who can help Casey. We already know I can't. Don't waste time. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I really shouldn't have read both. We're in a hurry. <laughs> I really shouldn't have read both of them because we're in a hurry. Uh... I've never seen somebody gel with everybody as quickly as Peggy has. Her, Karen, and Barbara have really become a little family already. Maybe we need to run this station on girl power. Slay queening. Hopefully it's cheaper than electric. Electric power. Sometimes I wonder if Peggy secretly wants her own show. She hasn't been shy about getting involved in the calls on the scream. Sometimes it feels as though Forrest could just leave for a coffee mid call and nobody would know. Peggy and Karen have missed another work event, this time first aid training, because of their training sessions. Their collection of cocktail parasols grow after each session. Why are they doing training sessions at a bar? So, Karen. Uh, oh, no, she missed. No, Karen missed first aid training. Okay. All right. 
so we don't want that one. Whoops. So she lives on 14 Craven Street. Craven Street. Mm, maybe. Barbara is really getting on well with all the staff here. Everybody gave her great feedback at our last review. I get the feeling there's something going on with her and Brad. Call it a hunch. Barbara got another cat recently. She must have at least five now. Daisy, Murphy, Penelope, Penelope, Freddie, and Lord Winston. I'll need to monitor productivity going forward. The cat photos are a big distraction for the rest of the team. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for my new horror script. I don't care what she thinks. A story about an alien egg at the center of the earth set to match, or oh, sorry, set to hatch on February 30th is a great idea. Why else would we avoid having a February 30th? Oh, <laughs> if we take 30 out of February, then we'll never get to February 30th. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I don't think so. Bradley Carter. Uh, 31 Axe Down Lane. I saw that. Axe Down. Nancy Drive. What's the green one? Okay. So this one could be doable. When I hired Brad as our station's food critic, people say I was crazy. People said... We only have three takeout places and a diner. What's the point? To them, I say, you can't be afraid to explore the darkest reaches of the unknown or Henderson. Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful lot of time together. I didn't realize she was so interested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join one of their after work meetings sometime. Ooh. I've always wanted to learn more about food. Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of the first aid training session. Brad made a joke about practicing mouth to mouth and Barbara got really upset and stormed off. The joke wasn't that bad. Okay, so who is this? Brad, he missed first aid training. All right, so this pile are ones that we don't want. Uh, what was this one? Karen. Oh, we haven't looked at Karen yet. I have a feeling we might find something interesting. So she's 22. Oh, she's only three houses away. Karen has really stepped up her duties in recent months. She has fully taken on Hamish's show alongside the Timberline twins ever since Wes left us. Hopefully she doesn't get any ideas about being paid double. Karen has started mentoring Peggy. I think this will be really good for Peggy. They are even doing team building training getaways to improve efficiency. I'm starting to suspect that these producer training getaways are being strated strategically timed timed. They've now both missed Secret Santa, First Aid Training, and the Teddy Gallows Jr. station visit. So this one's no good either. All right, so we only have one.
which is this one. So she's on 14 Nancy Drive. This guy was a war medic. Bunch of medical equipment in his home. Um, I, I would say this is the one. Wait, where does he live? I forgot. 14 Nancy Drive. So he's only nine houses away? Maybe? Shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think this is the one. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Oh, <laughs> I think I know who to call. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? Did he have booze earlier? He's going into shock. Peggy, what did the nurse say? He's going into shock. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate his wounds? Elevate his legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. I know this one. Apply an additional bandage. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix his bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. I could always get a new one. I was just thinking. Sorry. I was just thinking if I had to use like my own clothes and stuff like this, I think I would think like, oh no, I, I like this. I don't want to get blood all over it, but I would do it. Also, if someone's bleeding out and you got to take them to the hospital, you throw them in the back seat of your own car and just cover your car with blood. I mean, obviously you would have to, but it's just like my... Initial thought is like, oh no, there's gonna be blood soaking into my seats and stuff, but. <laughs> You're gonna be okay, Jason. Just relax now, okay? Boys and girls. He's not doing well. Is he? Is he gonna? He's gonna be fine. Be strong for Jason. <laughs> it's not looking good. Casey? I need you to be strong for Jason. I didn't want to say he's going to be fine because we don't know that. And that would be a lie. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's going to be okay. Okay? Okay. Oh crap, what's the guy's name? <laughs> John Hedges. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? 
I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's Oops, his number? Sorry. Five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Uh, who the hell is this calling me? At? <laughs> what time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. This is a medical emergency. Someone's been stabbed. Whistling man's back. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He, he's badly hurt, and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Yeah. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. When he was thrashing around, did he hurt you in any way? Or, or are you okay? I'm fine, but Jason passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. The show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Okay. From below it came. Laser racer. Laser razor. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. I should have just like collected all the mouse traps I found. Stacked them up on my desk. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. You know what? I should grab a beer. Time for some music. Should grab a couple beers. Just have a guy put the music on for me. Did we listen to that one yet? Uh, let's go to the flow. 
crying for help. Play a record, Forrest. You'll like this next song. It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. <laughs> Fine. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through, too. When you're ready, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, man. Hey, it's Roll Ricky. Good to hear from you again. Uh, how you holding up after everything? Is Maxie okay? Maxie is a little fighter, man. I just know he's gonna pull through. I think our roller show might be canceled tomorrow, though. Uh, I'm sorry again about how that went. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Ooh. Keep talking. What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Uh, Dawn? Ricky, please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. Uh, he just called her Bean. Bean? I didn't really know her before or, or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. <sighs> I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time. And then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And, and I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I would love to play this game again and choose all of the worst or most rude comments instead of the nicer ones um i'm pretty sure there's multiple endings on this thing so we're coming up on six hours on this game i think it's supposed to be like seven or eight let me see also i got about 15 minutes left and i gotta call it a day i tried to get on here as soon as i could the last of us was giving me trouble uh, oh, main story plus extra five hours, completionist eight hours. Hmm. I'd have to look up a video and then find where I am in the game. Okay. I know that now, ma'am. It took a long time to learn, but yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, 
I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Night, Ricky. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Ah, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! Oh, oh, that's the one cop that's left. It's Leslie, our 911 operator leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? I am. I'm driving back with an officer from Henderson now. One? back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. It's been a long night, so help is on the way. It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek mm. as we speak. Okay. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. Oh. Had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's why she didn't What's call. What's crazy about the phone lines, though? Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. Haven't we helped enough? What do you need? Gallows Creek is too big? You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. Copy, copy. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. <clears throat> I hope you're right. I don't think it's going to be that easy. It's nice to think, Peggy, but... I don't reckon Dawn is going to give up without a fight. She probably won't give up without a fight, no. But neither will we. Now, let's get you back into the arena, champ. Okay, champ. Forrest, shut the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, Oops. I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over, but for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much! If you haven't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. 
We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Jason lives. Jason Parker survived the Whistling Man. Jason, we meet at last. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. Ooh. So, Opiates? I feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the Whistling Man is still out there. Why do you ask? Yes, the Whistling Man's still out there. Why do you ask? You know something about the Whistling Man, don't you? Yeah. I do. Can we talk about what happened earlier? Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on, like it never existed. What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. Decided to plan a party in the woods. Have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. The party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. It seems like the power is completely gone. Uh-oh. How do we get it back on? I don't... Uh... Oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Ricky picked it up a while ago. In case you ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Fair point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, see you when you're back. Of course. I gotta go. The power goes out. I gotta go back down to the basement. Best hard cider ever made. All right, can I get a focus? Whoops. Focus, please. Thank you. 
Grasshopper from there. Oh, right here. Colorado Cider Company. It is hard cider, dry hopped with Simcoe hops, I believe, and also with lemongrass. It's so delicious. Uh, it's $10 for a four pack, so <laughs> I don't get it very often, but it's the best. Okay. All right. So I hate to do this to you right when we're getting into another exciting part, but I have run out of time for today. Uh, I'm st I need to be done by five and it's 458. I'm going to go get the charcoal going on the grill and I don't remember all of what Laura said we're making maybe brats uh, but also corn on the cob sweet corn cooked on the grill uh, so it takes usually about an hour <clears throat> from when you start the charcoal until it's burned up you know and hot enough to cook on so I'm gonna go get that started and then we're gonna have dinner uh, man, I really want to keep playing. This is like the exciting part, but hold, hopefully, oh, you know what? Let's do this. Let me look up. Now that I have a scene that looks different from the rest of the game, I can look up a full game playthrough. Full game. Color frequency, no commentary, full game. Dude, that must be awesome to do uh, full game playthrough videos with no commentary. You just play the game and record it. That's it. I mean, I, I like talking and, and having a conversation with everybody. But if you're making enough money just doing that, my dream job, man, just to play through. Prologue. Saving Leslie and Deputy Martinez. Saving Sandra. I saved Maurice. Is this part of the description? Whoa, this is new. It shows all the chapters. Um. What's the name? Saving Jason. Okay. So I'm going to go to here. All right, I got to go to where the power goes out. Oh, right here. Her name was what? What happened? Okay, so this is exactly where we are. So this is at three hours and 53 minutes and it ends at four hours and 22. So about a half an hour left in this video which will probably take me an hour to an hour and a half, probably maybe two hours to do. So that's perfect. We'll finish this game up next time. Uh, so there's no stream tonight. There will most likely be no stream tomorrow night, Monday, but I will be back on Tuesday and I'll probably just do this. We'll finish it up. And then Wednesday, satisfactory night, and then we'll uh, we'll plan. Oh, this weekend, Friday or Saturday. I really want to play Deep Rock Galactic again. If we can get some people together, uh, I almost messaged people to see if they wanted to play today when The Last of Us wasn't working. But I was like, nah, it's gonna take too long to get replies from everybody, um, and then I will have wasted too much time. So uh, this is what we're gonna be doing Tuesday, I believe. And we'll finish the game up. So, thanks so much for coming to hang out with me today, everybody who is here. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the stream and you haven't already, make sure you follow, turn on notifications, and if you'd like to skip the ads, and you would also be able to join my private satisfactory server and come play with us, you can subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. 
or you got to get lucky and get gifted a sub. If you're watching later on YouTube, you can use the YouTube join button or the Patreon link in the description if you want to join the server. If you do any of those things, make sure you look for a Discord link in the YouTube descriptions or pinned in the Twitch chat and message me. I'll get you the server information and we'll schedule time to come play with you. We're right at six hours and four minutes. Yeah, so it'll probably take me up to eight hours, I suppose. It's going to be close to, to two hours left, maybe. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody. I really do appreciate you guys being here. Time to go get my charcoal going and make the grill some dinner on the charcoal grill. And if I don't make it back Monday night, then I'll see you Tuesday. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Make sure to take some time to chill and relax for the rest of Sunday before we all got to go back to work and or school Monday. Later, guys.